here we are. Game number four. So, so far, the theme in these games in this play all seven has been that uh, Doubt has a really good understanding of the maps. Kind of from like the early stages, it was very clear to me that he had a better understanding of the maps. And, uh, you know, MBL has played solid, but unfortunately wasn't able to break down the strategy. I think that MBL picked a really nice civilization here because this map is oftentimes about early walls and then expanding and booming. Um, and Britons are really good with that with those cheap town centers. Kind of a fun matchup as well, honestly. Incas, uh, a civilization that could counter a whole lot of different types of units. But Incas up against Britons here? Britons, they don't necessarily have a ton of variety of units to send their way, but they have really good range on their archers and then solid infantry in front of that could be an option. I would say maybe the thing that Britons could struggle with is, is the mobility of the Eagles. I could definitely see Doubt uh, excelling with some Eagles. Doubt just loves to go like Feudal Age, a little bit of pressure, and then he uses the market to go Castle Age quickly and flood those Eagles. So you have two tiles of gold at the top on this map and then two tiles of stone the rest of the gold is all down towards the middle so this i guess would be the lowlands but i do have to share some opinions about this map see i played this map in a tournament uh like last year and my feelings on it then is the exact same thing that i'm seeing now in terms of fairness so i don't know if any map scripters are going to care about this for warlords 3 but like there is a big difference in generations with wood lines on this map and i think it, it could be unfair doubt has lots of wood right lots of wood lines means lots of potential to wall and so if you think about this for doubt he is the wood line setup so where he could wall in both of his golds easily how is mbl supposed to do that right mbl doesn't really have that option and mbl has way less wood here so scripting is not easy um I, i'm not going to say like this is like neglect on the part of the scripters this is still a show match right but um, seeing as Warlords is going to have a much bigger prize pool than the the tourney I played in where I found this was an issue, I hope that they address that in some capacity. Part of the issue there is anytime someone spawns in a corner on a map that's usually fairly wallable, the corner player just tends to have more space and tends to have more wood lines. So, uh, but that's just like my my first the first thing that I mentioned here. Reminder, it's a nine villager start, so things are always a little bit faster in the buildup. And doubt, it's a play all seven. They're probably splitting money per win here, so doubt, doubt's just seeing dollar signs right now. And he was debating on attacking that villager, and now MBL's brought his scout back. But this looks like a fast castle for MBL. At least so far, that seems to be what MBL's thinking of. T90, can you tell us about how Chakram's affected the game you played on Lolan? Listen, I'm okay with how many trebs I lost. If you didn't watch that game, guess how many trebs I lost to Chakram's. <laughs> I'm okay with that because of the result, okay? The result was fi fine for me. Losing the trebs. Uh, you know, the unfortunate thing really is that that ended up being the highlight for many people were the trebs I was losing to Nilly's Chakram's. I lost, uh, I think I lost 16 trebs to Chakrams. Because I would go forward with four or five. Because you know me, I never trickle treb. I'd go forward with four or five. They'd be in a line when I'd click the castle. And then the Chakrams would show up, stand to the side, and whoosh, attack. And then all my trebs would just fall because of the pass-through damage. Okay. Yeah. At, at one point, there was like seven lined up. Yeah, I lost a lot of trebs. But we won the game. This is a crazy game, by the way. It was a series against Nilly, if you want to search for it. T90 versus Nilly. I, I'd like to think that Nilly right now, you know, he's he's retired from full-time Age of Empires. He's still keeping an eye out. I still talk to him. We're still pals, of course. I caught one up with him recently, and I like to think that he's lurking right now. And there's a part of him that's very upset that when he goes to liquipedia.com, that... And he, ser he, he searches for players T90 official and Nilly that there's only one official tournament result. And that T90's one, uh, up 1-0 there. You know? Really hoping that lures him back. But for now, uh, you know, Nilly's doing well, guys, for those that are interested in his well-being. So. so, Fast Castle for MBL. 
Dal fast feudal, who will obviously wall up. And he went for eagle opening. And now he's also going for some archers. Dal won't be in Castle Age for some time. What he does click up, though, to the Castle Age because of all these eco upgrades. And eventually the farms, you have to think his eco will be good. But MBL pretty relaxed in this scenario. And like I said, I think this is good for Britain's cheap town centers. You could just play into some archers behind these walls, but he might have some trouble if Dow gets enough archers behind the walls here. Especially if Dow can get fletching here. But, I mean, that's a lot of investment. Dow only has two farms right now. He'd then need to use the wood for a blacksmith. He's already using the wood for a market. This is such a doubt thing, by the way. Like, not going for fletching for his archers because he doesn't have the faith to micro them well. And he just goes for the market so he could sell a stone. That is so doubt. Ooh, and this is this is actually very much classic MBL, adding a stable with a sieve that wouldn't normally go for a stable. We'll go for the market, go for the stable. He's also hiding the stable. Doubt. We'll maybe see that in a moment. But he shouldn't see it now. And yeah, MBL will not want him to see that. Oh, Nilly's playing poker right now? Interesting. <laughs> Is he streaming it? He did stream that he was playing... He did stream poker at one point. I find that interesting. <laughs> I find this so interesting because he's like... Got a big addictive personality, right? As does like many people who've committed their live stage of empires. And so he like was full-time poker for like a decade. Then was full-time AOE for like seven or eight years. Think, says he needs more life balance. <laughs> so, you know, he steps away from AOE. And now I'm seeing him play poker for 12 hours a day again. <laughs> Ooh, uh, yeah, it's a cycle. Yeah, it's interesting. <laughs> I mean, he, he was a pro poker player for a long time, guys. Like He's, he's no joke when it comes to poker. So, um, you know, I know he, he's always enjoyed that too, so... Anyways, I find that funny. I think we as human... Maybe I shouldn't use Nilly as an example, but tell me if you agree with this statement in general that, like... I think it's very easy for people to be like, man, like, there's something you're addicted to or you just really enjoy, right? Let's say it's a video game. And you think, man... Especially when Steam says how many hours you put into it, you're just like, dang, man, if I didn't spend those three and a half thousand hours playing that game, I could have been more fit... I could have done better in my career. I could have spent more time with my family. All this stuff, right? We always convince ourselves, oh man, if only I didn't have this, I'd be so different. That's not true at all, bro. Because if you didn't have that, you would find some other vice or some other thing that you would do to fill the time because you don't want to do those things. You don't want to work out or you don't want to spend time in your career and you don't enjoy it as much as maybe playing Age of Empires all the time. So i that's one thing that I've learned as I've gotten older is like, I always used to beat myself up over, like, quote-unquote, wasted time with things that I enjoyed. And it's like, no. I realize now, it's like, no, I wouldn't have actually done any of these things that I like to lie to myself and say I would. I would have just found something else. It's like, for me, it's like, I take a day off from Age of Empires so I could, uh, you know, so I, 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 like, have more life balance. And you know what my life balance is? It's not freaking... I'm freaking playing Age of Empires instead of casting it. Or I'm like, playing some game on my PlayStation that I suck at because I like to game, right? So I I think it's a good thing that I've come to this conclusion about myself. I think it might also be a bad thing because there are ways I want to improve my life that I'm not really doing, but that's just life, right? Can we all agree? That's just life. MBL's played amazing here so far, by the way. 10 kills, zero deaths. The Knights completely caught doubt out. And for the first time in this series, MBL has just had the perfect opening. And it hasn't looked so good for Doubt. The Feudal Age pressure was was kind of toothless. Like, was very surprised that, oh god, now the Knights are in. Very surprised he didn't go for any fletching, like, on his archers. Also, he made so many eagles against walls. And now, now MBL is through his walls. And MBL gets to micro a little bit. 
Love this TC spot from MBL as well. It's it's kind of to the side, but it still gives you what you want. You get the wood and you get the gold. Knights micring around. One of those knights is weak. I think MBL tried to escape with that, but Dow closed the uh, closed the gap. But yeah, now you can't even pressure MBL if you're Dow because you, you're forced to chase these knights down. Really frustrating time. Um. T90 lurks in obscure AOE2 Twitch streams for more work-life balance. No, that that is... I convinced myself that that's actually work. I convinced myself that after playing Age of Empires for four hours and then casting Age of Empires for seven hours, that also having Age of Empires streams up in the background is helpful for YouTube videos. And sometimes it is. Sometimes it is. You know, occasionally I see an amazing game. And, uh, you know, I say, all right, that's got to be a video, so. I think for MBL, he's going to build up towards a castle if this pressure gets out of control. But he's going to go for uh, long swords. apparently. He's going for man-at-arms now, so we'll probably see a second barracks. All right, Steven Chrome says, can we talk? Can you talk about the potential farm updates? Yeah, so I'll talk about that now. I'm going to make a video about it as well. So, so let me just... Tell people what the potential change will be. So in the pup build, which is like the, let's just say like the the test build uh, for the game, there is a feature <clears throat> where uh, it auto builds the farms for you around a mill. Uh, not just a mill, it would do around the TC as well. Okay. And uh, I've seen chatter from the community about this, and there's of course been a lot of jokes. Her her, T90 is gonna be amazing with this, right? Because I'm known for not having good farms, right? T90 is going to love this feature because, oh, it's going to be perfect for him. I hate the feature. I do not understand why when there's such a long list of things I think can benefit this game that we are removing aspects of skill impression. Uh, sorry, skill expression out of nowhere. I really think the beauty of AoE 2 is the depth of the game and the tiny little details that you everyone can focus on and do it so differently. And I think an auto feature to automatically build farms, which is such a basic thing for the game, I think is horrible for the game. Especially considering the things that are still lacking for the game that would help the game so much more. So that, that's my take on it. Um, and we'll, we'll kind of leave it at that for now. But if you wanted to take, that's my take. And I, I'm a little disappointed by it. And I've expressed that, of course, but, you know, that's... Uh, I have no control over... I, I, in some ways, have uh, can can change the direction of the game with like what I say or my my thoughts and feelings, but it is one of the most disappointing things that I've seen the devs do for the game in a very long time, truthfully, because of removing skill expression, of you know, and and all these tiny little details that are so beautiful about age, and which is why I think age lasts for so long, but also because there are so many things that could be done to benefit the game that have still been neglected. And if you're like, T90, what are those things? I'll make a video on that, too. All right. Um, so, yeah. And, you know, maybe maybe opinions will change on this, that, or the other. But that, that's my feeling right now. And uh, it, it's, just, it's just kind of a worrying sign for me, you know? Because I want this game to be recognizable over time. If there's a day where, you know, the, the dev support stops or the, the game goes back into where it was before and when I was still casting and, and doing the game back in the 2010s, uh, I want things to be awesome still. And I want it to be the same game. So, I, MBL had the sneaky longsword play here from down here in the south, and it just mopped up Dow. That was just so good. Like, Dow was behind economically. He needed to make a solid push to, to try and catch up in that regard. And MBL played that perfectly by hiding some of the barracks down here. I don't think Doubt knew that there were going to be long swords. Incas do have access to slingers, and Doubt's going to make them now. But you know what you can make to kill slingers? You can make some freaking longbows, baby, and MBL's going to build a castle at the top of this hill. So it could be longbow, and it could be longsword. My thought when I saw the Civ matchup was what Britons would do would be, uh, like, what Britons would want in this Civ matchup would be Champions and Arbalest. Longbows could be even better. 
but it's a little worrying for MBL because there's monks, there's slingers, there's scorpions. This castle needs to go up quickly. And he's going to go for the castle there. Um, someone says, bad direction to make the game robotic. I will stop playing. I just, I, I agree it's a bad direction, right? Like the change itself is not even as, as big of a worry as just the direction that change makes me think they, they want the game to go. Um, and I, guys, I'm just so emotional about it because I, I care about the game so much and I want so, you know, I've, I've been able to, to help and, and see this game come to where it is now. And I, I wanted to, to continue to go in positive direction. So I, I think because of my emotions there, I really need to shut up. <laughs> I, I hope, I hope everyone just say we get it or thank you or whatever, if you appreciate my perspective, but I just got to stop talking about it. Cause I, I just can't. With a mic in front of my face, stop. Uh, you know, if I go past a certain point. So, MBL's TC is getting castle dropped. Nice play from Doubt. This is where MBL's taking gold in the middle. So, that's a really nice spot for Doubt to find. There are still these, the two tiles of gold here for MBL. And this castle will slowly shoot down the Siege Workshop. And he's applying pressure with longbows and with longswords here. And so, the longbows are now something that Doubt doesn't really have an answer to. Eagles, in theory, are good against archers, of course. But if the longswords are next to it, the engagements can't be taken. So this is really the sweet spot for MBL. Not to mention, he's got an incredible food eco back in home compared to Doubt. He's got 40 on food. And he's just been able to simply shift over here to take more gold and take more stone. Really good play from MBL. And um, are these longswords may not kill too much with the raids. I think there's a slinger in there somewhere. Slinging them down. But this honestly could just become a situation where MBL's got such a big force here. That he can drop a castle here if he wishes to. It might be more realistic for MBL to actually just castle drop the middle. Because that's where the gold is. But he doesn't actually see the gold. He just sees the TC which is kind of interesting. Oh man, Doubt's Relics go down. So that this is maybe another reason why MBL might want to bring Villagers to the hill to, to make sure he fully controls these Relics. And here comes the... Uh, <clears throat> here comes the Villagers. And Doubt's going to try and convert the Longswords. Now you convert the Longswords, there's just less of them from MBL, but that is not a unit that really helps you actively against these Longbows, which is now the biggest threat. Get the relics down! Go, 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 go! <laughs> Wherever Doubt will take these relics could also be in uh, in a bad spot. What is this castle, MBL? What is this passive castle? That is so weird. To have full control of this position and not drop the castle on the TC. Can't say I agree with that. It's still not a bad castle, but like... I guess maybe he was worried... Could be distracted over here, of course, but maybe he was worried it could be denied. Like, if this is Doubt, or if this is Yo, this is really anybody. I think they placed that castle in a spot where it ranges the rest of the economy from, from the opponent. So, now MBL will see this gold. Doubt won't be able to mine it there, but Doubt does have a TC on this gold over here. And he still has this little army... He could maybe go up to Imp, and now he drops a castle here. And so Doubt could maybe treb down MBL's castle and maybe have a chance here. Nice shot from Doubt to come back in this. Like, you think about how this series has gone. It was like Doubt would get the lead, MBL would fight. It was a pretty good fight, but it always felt kind of inevitable. Right now, with the amount of gold that Doubt's been able to find, I actually think Doubt's got a, a sizable chance at being able to come back in this. He's, now, what will he need to make? He's going to need to make Trebs initially. And then I think Eagle Warriors. And, and you just use the mobility of the Eagles to, to wreak havoc on MBL's economy. Like this here, right? It's like, yeah, MBL can make Longswords, but they still have to run over here and they're awfully slow. Hmm. Someone says, I do not mean to be rude. Rather, just as a question, is there a possibility you're overreacting? Or do you feel your criticisms and concerns are without a doubt necessary to consider for game longevity? Um, 
I, I'm talking in front of a mic that's live, and I haven't, like, written out or calculated my thoughts or, you know, like, uh, obviously, of course, right? I'm over or underreacting on things constantly when I'm speaking live in front of an audience. That's just how it goes, right? But I think the take that I had of there are so many things that should be on the priority list to push this game further above whatever they're, they're, they're pitching with this farm thing, that statement is not an overreaction at all, right? And and so again, like I said, it, it's easy for me to want to like go in depth on it. That's just gonna have to be for a video because I I brought up a lot of things behind the scenes where I can for a long time, and um, I don't know. Maybe it'll be helpful to have some videos and really talk about what I think would benefit the game that hasn't happened in the last five years. So, MBL's lost a lot of his longbows trying to split them up, and this has definitely reached a snowball situation for him, where you've got to keep those units all together. The long swords complement the long bows. The long bows complement the long swords. But if you have one particular group in one particular area, it could be problematic. Example being like eagle warriors, right? These eagle warriors, they will snipe those long bows if those long bows are exposed. So long sword actually becomes the most important unit right now for MBL. MBL's collected more resources, but Doubt has a lot of gold and. Any unit that costs food for the Incas is discounted. So, Eagles already don't cost a lot of food. It's really easy with 35 farmers to be able to spam Eagles here with the Incas. So, two-handed swordsman for MBL. That should be enough against early Eagle numbers. He's got decent enough upgrades. Just needs to get the numbers. But it's like... I, type a one in chat if you've lost so many games in these situations where you're just getting going to get picked apart with eagles. This is so tough. And now, MBL always has to have long swords here to protect the traps. Because the second he leaves the traps, they get sniped by eagles. Which means, he's exposed at home. Oh man, villagers, don't, longbow, don't open the gate. No, you traitor! Oh, and Doubt notices it, so he attacks the gate. That's sick, man. I love that from Doubt. So now the gate is held open. Bit of a Hodor situation there from Doubt. And those eagles go right back here. And that's immediately just 20 villagers exposed. Here we've got villagers exposed. But here we also do have a castle for MBL. And Treb. So he could maybe Treb down Doubt's castle. And then start to pressure that area. Here, MBL's pushed forward to take out Doubt's Trebs. Because Doubt doesn't have anything but his own castle to defend that. And MBL will take one. MBL should take two if he's paying attention and keep his castle up. But, you know, he's still trying to react to all these raids. And both players are actually losing important units right now. And, oh no! MBL, your trebs! So, both players are going to lose all their trebs in this treb war is what I'm seeing. Wow! But again, I can't help but think about how important it is for doubt that he kept this economy active this whole time. It was never castle pushed. MBL though, 30 long swords. Now you need slingers if you're doubt. But the you know the the good news for doubt is that there's not many longbows anymore. So slingers might actually be able to push this right back. This has been the best game of the series so far. This is really good. I think this castle will go down for MBL. And now MBL sees the eagles are coming this way. And Doubt's going to see that Longswords and Trebs are coming from this direction. MBL's Relics. They used to be Doubt's Relics, of course. Uh, they're probably going to be going down as well. Game is so close right now. This is back and forth stuff. Slingers will shred infantry. MBL will need castles for longbows. He will have one castle. And that castle is going to be in the very right of the map. The last time... That MBL was, uh, that Doubt was over here. He was able to get through the gate. Here he just runs underneath the TC. Long swords feel painfully slow. I think they do have squires though. It's just that eagles are so fast. MBL is 17 two handed swordsman in queue, getting the final armor upgrade now. That's good. Doubt needs to find a way to engage here, needs to find a way to raid here. I'm loving the fact that both players have just tech switched when they needed to. 
The player who has the mobility in doubt has used the mobility very nicely. MBL, though, has still been able to find good engagements considering the lack of mobility. But there he doesn't have the numbers, so Doubt takes that fight. Still getting a lot of Slinger upgrades here, Doubt, but you know you already do quite a bit of damage because of the bonus damage against infantry without many upgrades. So the Slingers are really dangerous. I wonder if it's worth it for MBL to go like Light Calf here. Or just... Or even drop Archer Ranges and go for Arbalest, right? If you really need range units, I think... Oh, and he actually has two castles. Sorry, guys. Okay, two castles makes me feel better about the longbows. I was just thinking that producing longbows isn't that realistic for him if he had one castle. Um, I, I missed that. Maybe he can get to a third. MBL slowly creeping in towards Doubt's base. Hasn't taken heavy losses here. He will add Archer Ranges now. Maybe for the reason we mentioned. Are longbows actually good? Uh, you know, they're tricky to mass, right? They're really tricky to mass, which is the biggest deal for, with them. And since Britons produce faster from their archer ranges, it, it is another reason why you don't see a lot of people go for longbows. Because it's like, why do that when I can just have arbalest with extra range producing quicker? But longbows are really good. They are really good. It's just situational, and this is the perfect situation for them for MBL. Look at him now. MBL's almost pop-capped, so he says, okay, we'll toss a couple long swords away. Now your slingers have to chase me. But still messy stuff, because Dow can find some areas with these eagles. Oh, man, there's just so many random units around. This is such a scrappy game. Long swords down here. Long swords back here. Eagles here. Trebs here. But MBL has four trebs. He has the hill. And he has enough long swords waiting to protect those trebs. That's huge. That This is amazing for MBL. Now he has two castles. Also, look at the amount of eco he has underneath this castle. That's important. And this gold becomes a really big deal now. MBL actually doesn't have a lot of gold income. So bringing villagers over here is pretty much needed right now. He just ran out of gold everywhere. No, that's not true. He still has some gold here, but still. And now we see War Wolf. Yo, let's go. This is going to be a massive battle, guys. Now, the best time to use War Wolf. Uh, well, actually, the best time to use War Wolf is in the Treb War. But the, the, your best chance at demolishing someone's army with the War Wolf tech is the first time. Before they know you have that tech in. Because Doubt's not going to assume Warwolf is in because it's not a Trebor situation, which is usually when you use it for the greater accuracy. But the splash damage from the Trebs could flatten these Slingers. Oh, please, MBL, click the Slingers for the people. Okay. Oh, man. Oh, man. Okay, here we go. He hit the mining camp. Please hit the army. Here we go. Oh, God. It's a massacre. Look at the bodies! <laughs> and Doubt knows now that Warwolf must be in. And now he knows to split up his units and keep them on the move all the time. But how are you supposed to get to this gold? How are you supposed to engage when MBL has so much range at play here? The Eagles, they say, well, we you don't. You don't engage against it. Instead, you, you avoid it. Yeah, this is the way Eagles need to play. Now, you, you do that, and you hope then that MBL sends units away from those Trebs over to this side. But I think MBL realizes, I'm not going to do that. I might lose Vils, but I'm just going to send new champions here because I can afford it. I'll eventually kill these Eagles, and I will still be able to focus fully on this push all the time. Again, gets the takes the relics away from Doubt. It's been interesting to see how both players have held these relics for a while. And it's just 90 army from MBL. And these weren't even elite longbows at this point. So the, the longbows are already working with 10 range. They're going to be on 11 range once it's elite. And there's still potential for the Yeoman upgrade, which makes it 12 range. And then there's fully upgraded champions in front. Champions are clearing up the raids. And MBL, his final, final task to win this game is just to push up this hill. But boom! Oh, more wolf connect connects again. 
And now what's Doubt doing for gold? Okay, so it says he has 15 on gold, but there's actually just 20 gold remaining there. We are going to watch him finish his last gold mine. And so now he's without gold. In theory, could make like some skirms or some... Well, yeah, pretty much just some skirms. I don't think any of that's going to be enough. And now Yeoman comes in as well from MBL. So yeah, from the start, MBL felt like... Dropping those town centers was important. Using the additional range. And it was so cool to see him defend from the all-in eagles from Doubt. Boom. But then he didn't have to be that fearful of the slingers because he went into the longbows at the perfect time as well. And he really thought about it too. He was on stone pretty early before slingers would have been something Doubt would have gone for. This is the combo you want with Britons. Four trebs. Warwolf is in if you need it. Fully upgraded champions and longbows. I guess some armor is missing, but you don't see this every day. And now I'm going to be conflicted because I was very opinionated in the middle of this cast. Does this go to YouTube? <laughs> Sometimes being too opinionated is a bad thing, right? You get people who creates a whole conversation beyond the freaking game, and this is a masterpiece of a game. First couple games weren't really that close. Lack of mobility is not an issue when you can get this big ball of units combined like this, and your opponent has to deal with you. And, I mean, I appreciate Doubt's fight here, right? He's a competitor. Even being up 3-0 three, three here, he's going to want to fight. But, like, even if he had 20 skirms right now, they're still champions, right? And the champions are going to receive one damage from the skirm, so the champions are just not... Uh, with the champions being out there, I just don't know if there's much of a chance for him. Also doesn't have the relics anymore, right? Like, if you're sitting on the relics, you might think your opponent's going to run out of gold. You have the relic income. I think Doubt just feels like MBL hasn't ended him yet. And MBL says, oh, I'm not finished with you. MBL is like a cat playing with his food. He says, oh, I'm just going to send a message. Because guess what? We've got towers coming up now. Keep upgrade's going to come in as well. MBL's going to tower rush the guy to oblivion. Arrow Slits is now coming in. So he's like, good luck taking back this position, Doubt. And the GG's called from Doubt even before the keep's complete just because the champions cleared up the skirms. What a fun game. That was a really good game. I enjoyed that one. Well played. I think, um, you know... The, the opening from Doubt was a bit awkward. I talked about how easy it is on this map to wall and how it turns into a boom. And, and also, I mentioned how I felt like Doubt actually had the superior map. And he didn't go for the wall and boom approach. It, it could be that maybe Doubt was worried um, because the Britons have such cheap town centers that if he tried to boom, that the Britons would outboom him. But the eagle play uh, didn't really amount to much for Doubt. And MBL's sneaky longswords worked perfectly there. So well played to MBL. And and again, what I thought was so cool was how he had the eco timing, right? But then it was longsword, defends from the eagles, and then doubts like, oh yeah, I have slingers, right? Starts to make the slingers, and then immediately castle goes up. Now there's longbows. It's like he thought about it in advance and how he wanted this game to flow. And it was just perfect. Because if he went to stone right after he cleared up the Eagles, or right when he saw the first slinger, he could have had bigger problems. Beautiful play there from MBL. Good to see him get a win here. Uh, and Doubt also hung in there for a long time there. I think Doubt did a really good job controlling those golds. MBL, I think, could have finished this game much faster if this castle on this hill was actually on Doubt's TC. Because, like, most of Doubt's farming eco was all back here. He loses this TC. He's under a lot more pressure if that castle is actually in his face. But MBL might didn't maybe didn't want to take the risk there because he thought he had the lead. And uh, had Doubt surprised him, maybe he denies the castle, maybe things fall apart. Then all the viewers are like, oh no, MBL is throwing, what is happening? And then you still have a couple people being like, T90's too opinionated. And then I'm like, I know. And it's, yeah, it would have been horrible. So, um, you know, we didn't want any of that. And that's why MBL maybe went for the safe castle, safe approach and ended up finishing off the game with some cool text in the late stages.